Well, hey folks, how you doing? Welcome back to my YouTube channel and thanks for joining me here today or this evening, wherever you are. So this isn't a video I thought I'd be making, but I wanted to set the record clear on this third uh, To the Stars Academy video, the third ATIP video uh, that's called Go Fast. Uh, because, you know, a couple days ago I made a video kind of making fun of the debunking of it, you know, saying maybe it was a low flying satellite or meteorite. <laughs> and I kind of made it fun of all the alternative explanations for this object. But I have to say, after looking at all of the evidence so far, um, I think that the TTSA uh, people, um, the DeLong group, I think they made a miscalculation with this video. I don't think it shows anything extraordinary. I mean, I could be wrong. I haven't heard the pilots. We haven't heard the pilots testimony yet. Um, so we don't know what happened. It's just a very short clip that shows this little object moving very quickly on the at FLIR system, the onboard FLIR infrared system, with ha which has radar and so forth connected to it. But uh, based on some interactions I've had with the folks at Metabunk, Dot com, the people that attempt to debunk footage like this. I, in this case, I have to agree with them. I don't agree with their debunking efforts on other topics. On some of them, I do. And I think we, it's important to be honest here. Uh, it's a big field, this subject of UFOs and phenomena like this. And there are going to be mistakes because there's just so many variables around. And in this case, I think the TTSA group made a mistake. In essence, they thought that this object was 100 feet over the water and at the distance the plane was from the water at around 25,000 uh, feet, you know, about five miles up, it would have meant that this object was going 350 miles per hour or faster. But it looks like from very simple trigonometric calculations uh, and these discussions I had with the folks at Metabunk, they convinced me that this object is at about 12 or 13,000 feet High. You can see from the FLIR scope, the distance from the F-18 and so forth. And if you do the math and include the speed of the F-18 itself, it really seems that this object's going maybe about 100 miles per hour or less, which means it's not moving at extraordinary speeds. I mean, maybe it was, but we haven't heard from the pilots as of the making of this video. So if it's only going 100 miles an hour or less, uh, it could be a whole number of things, and it's not really a go-fast object. It's more like a slow-fast object. I mean, you can call it what you want. So in this case, it's just an object. It doesn't appear to have any extraordinary characteristics. The winds are very fast at different altitudes, and it could be something floating in the wind or something like that. You have to take it into calculation, something called parallax, which is parallax, which is your a field of view that makes things seem to move as you go past them and so forth. In any case, I think the main thing with this field is to be honest uh, and tell the truth. And we're not always going to get it correct 100% of the time. I've talked to enough folks and I've seen enough footage uh, that I know this phenomena is absolutely real. Just take flight 1628, you know, over Alaska in 1986, where Captain Terauchi. Uh, you know, saw these huge objects, and you had confirmation from Elmendorf Air Force Base in Black Swan Ghosts. I wrote about uh, someone I know who talked to one of these radar operators. And they saw these huge objects, absolutely huge, around the 747, a cargo jet. You had the radar contact at Anchorage. You had the third down at the FAA, John Callahan, who testified at the Citizen Harry about the cover-up that ensued and how the uh, intelligence community gathered this meeting with Reagan officials and said, we're not telling the public about this because it's going to cause panic. We've never seen a UFO on, on radar for 30 minutes like this and so forth. I mean, you have so many strong cases. I think the Nimitz 2004 footage, the gimbal video and so forth, the FLIR shots are very strong evidence, but we have commanders Fravor and Slot who came forward, did numerous media interviews and said, this is like nothing they've ever seen on earth before. The object goes from zero to a thousand miles per hour in seconds. We have the radar 
contact from the F-18s. We have the radar contact from the Nimitz group. We have the F-18 pilots themselves and a second F-18 uh, whose pilots have not been identified for, uh, I guess, confidentiality reasons. So we have four people that saw these objects and the ones that came forward told us it has to be from another uh, <laughs> planet than Earth because nothing like that exists uh, that they know about. And these are the top F-18 pilots in the world. So we have very strong evidence. But in this case, I think the third ATIP video, uh, what is it again? It's the Advanced Aeronautics Threat Information Program from the DOD that Luis Elizondo uh, ran. I think in this case, unless we have more evidence come forward that this is simply a misidentification, and it happens. And the main thing is, look, to always tell the truth. That's my view. That's my goal in having this channel for you. And it's always been my goal with these topics because the truth is on our side with these phenomena. I mean, I wouldn't be involved with it after all these years if I hadn't talked to so many witnesses and people from the intelligence community and the government and so forth who've told me how real it is. And I think you know it's real. I've shared as many of these stories as I can in Black Swan Ghosts, but uh, uh, I don't have any doubt that this is a real phenomenon, but it doesn't mean we're going to always bat 100%. And in this case, I think the folks at Metabunk uh, get a home run on this for showing us that this is not a fast-moving object close to the water. It's an object a couple miles up that's moving at kind of ordinary speeds. Now, one more uh, type of behavior that I see going on at Metabunk uh, com that I don't like is they refer to people like us that are interested in this topic, sincerely interested in as a UFO enthusiast. Well, let me tell you something. Nick Poe, who worked for the Ministry of Defense in the UK, uh, the MOD, told us at the citizen hearing that they deliberately used the word UFO enthusiast or UFO hobbyist to discredit them because the MOD knew that this was a real phenomena and they didn't want public panic and public interest in this topic. So they deliberately picked pejorative words that would imply that people interested in this topic were wearing tinfoil hats or a little kooky or something. So that's a deliberate propaganda technique. And I think the folks that, uh, it's a deliberate disinformation technique. I think the folks at Metabunk should know better than to do this. We're looking at evidence, we're looking at data. You don't have to use names and labels like that. I mean, people thought the Wright brothers were also a bunch of aircraft enthusiasts. They called them poor lonely nuts on the beach. Well, uh, if you've flown in a plane recently, you know they weren't a bunch of poor, lonely nuts. So anyway, you have to watch your language when you talk about this topic and don't fill it with value-filled judgments. Stick to the facts. So anyway, that's my view on it. Um, let me know what you think. I'm always curious to hear your comments here. And um, if you have another point of view on it or more evidence that I haven't included, or please let me know. Okay. Well, anyway, thanks for watching, folks. We'll see you soon and take care for now. Bye.